Hi, welcome again to Art Arts. Today we go back to Siena or nearly to Montepulciano, but before I want to talk to you about the the way that the scholars have to uh, decide uh, to attribute a piece of art uh, to the artist that realized it. Um, we have two different ways because uh, few, very few times we have the signature of the artist in the jewelry, in the sculpture, or in the paintings. We have to um, use two ways, the documents, so the uh, historian go to the archives and look for testaments, uh, uh, payments, and whatever is, can be connected to the piece of art itself, and the uh, knower, the art historian, the connoisseur, he says, um, with his eyes can recognize the style of the artist. So now these two ways are put uh, often together, and that's uh, a, um, the uh, perfect example of this, the centennials of the Civic Museum of Montepulciano. Okay? Uh, this is uh, uh, an oil on canvas and has been realized uh, for a um, procession as a processional banner, so it was a devotional painting, and he was realized by Domenico Beccafumi. Why we are sure of this? Because a few years ago, uh, Andrea Giorgi, an historian, found a document in the archives of the city of Montepulciano talking about a payment by the city itself to Domenico di Pintore, Domenico Painter. Uh, there was any quoting about the piece of art that he realized there was just the price 10 uh, scudis or 10 bucks we can say uh, but and Alessandro Angelini, an art historian, a connoisseur, a very a skillful one, uh, rec um, realized that the payment was for this banner, for this banner, the Centennials, because Centennials was one of the patron saints of the city. So this banner was not just devotional, but has also a civic message. Uh, she was a Dominican nun. I'll show you it again. So you see is dressed in white and black. She's have she's a, a lily as an attribute, like St. Catherine of Siena. St. Catherine was very devoted to her. Now I have no time to explain you the story of her life, uh, but she's a patron saint of the city, like the others, like St. Antilia or St. John the Behated. She's presenting the city to uh, to the to God, okay, and she's presenting it. We can say like a pizza. We can uh, see something more, a detail of it. Here we are. So even if the figure is very static and very hieratic, it seems like medieval. Uh, we have to recognize that it's not medieval at all because this kind of um, uh, vest, uh, the delicacy of the, the tenderness of this uh, long and tapering heads. Okay, and the city was the city of Montepulciano itself. So, so we can recognize the public palace, the church here, St. Francis, the church of St. St. Augustine, the walls, okay, this is Porta Farina, a uh, very known uh, city gate of the city, and we are in, uh, in, in medieval uh, Middle Ages at all. Even this landscape is connected to uh, the Umbrian ones realized by the painter Perugino, uh, so we know by Vasari something about Domenico Beccafumi. He was uh, a, uh, the son of a farmer, but the landlord, Lorenzo Beccafumi, kind of adopted, he became a protege of him. He made him study uh, because he recognized the, the skills, he was a very good drawer, and he became one of the the best artist in Siena or in Italy in the 1500s, uh, drawer, painter, sculptor, um, it's fantastic. I recommend you to go and see some uh, piece of art of him uh, spread all over Siena. Uh, he's a, he was a mannerist, so he uh, chose to follow the, uh, the, the style of Raphael or Leonardo. We can recognize, for example, in this the, de the, the delicate clouds here, some sign of the Leonardo way of painting of Michelangelo, but he also found his own way of uh, in history of art. So his personal uh, manner, we can say, he was a mannerist like uh, like Perugino, and the the, the, the landlord that discovered him uh, made him study, and uh, in honor of him, the Domenico took his last name, so he became Domenico. Beccafumi and Lorenzo Beccafumi, the landlord in these years, was also the uh, governor, the podesta of the city of Montepulciano. So the link are 
just connecting to this kind of attribution and we realized for sure this is one of the first piece of art surely the first documented of Domenico Beccafumi that he works also for the governor for the tyrant we have to say of Siena in this date there was a, a politician Pandolfo Petrucci linked with um, and friend of Lorenzo uh, Beccafumi, he realized these uh, heroines, uh, so you, you see, uh, is just becoming another way of painting. It's not uh, Peruginesque uh, mediv anymore, it's not medieval or erotic anymore, he is uh, very gracious and elegant. Uh, this is Cleopatra. Uh, so, for today, I think I've finished. I thank you for your attention, and tomorrow we go in a very unknown and particular place. We go inside the clay hills uh, to discover the history of the Church of Pava. Have you ever heard about it? See you tomorrow.